and the fight to stop the coronavirus is going on throughout the U.S. government, including a Pentagon agency known for out-of-the-box innovation. Three years ago, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, known as DARPA, set the very ambitious goal of stopping disease outbreak in just 60 days. First, on CBS This Morning, we have an inside look at that project. It's in the middle of its first real test. Senior investigative correspondent Catherine Herridge is at the Pentagon with more on the story. Catherine, I have to say, I like how these people are thinking, but realistically, how realistic is it and how soon could it work? Well, good morning, Gail. DARPA has a reputation for being ahead of the curve, and right now they're hunting for the most potent antibodies to combat COVID-19. And while clinical trials can take years, DARPA says it can't wait. People say that's impossible. You can't do it. Well, that's what we're here to do. That's the goal of DARPA. DARPA, one of the Pentagon's most mysterious agencies, is usually hidden. You won't find any signs outside its headquarters in suburban Washington, D.C. But pandemic prevention platform manager Amy Jenkins told me DARPA inventions are all around us. The Internet? The Internet. Not just that. Everything from Siri to stealth technology to self-driving cars, even your phone's GPS. Now, with hope of a coronavirus vaccine still uncertain, DARPA is zeroing in on something faster. It's like a temporary fix for COVID-19. A temporary fix. It's meant to put up firebreak around the pandemic. By sifting through the blood of COVID-19 survivors, DARPA hopes to identify and clone the genetic blueprint of the most powerful one to three antibodies that best fight the virus. We got to find that needle in the haystack. That's a game changer. It is, and it's absolutely revolutionary. DARPA funded four teams of antibody detectives. And they push us to levels that, you know, we maybe wouldn't even consider. Blood from the first known COVID-19 survivor in the U.S. was flown here to Rob Carnahan's lab at Vanderbilt University, along with other samples from survivors infected at the outbreak's epicenter in Wuhan, China. After reviewing over 3,000 antibodies, they're now down to just a handful they hope will best combat the virus. Each antibody has its own sort of personality. Yes, it's very good at inhibiting virus, but is it also good at being made? The most potent antibodies will be grown in giant steel tanks that look like beer fermenters called bioreactors. DARPA wants to take the concept to the next level. We have said rather than doing this in those big bioreactors, let's turn our body into the bioreactor. In upcoming clinical trials, they hope to inject people with the genetic code. It's the blueprint for the, for the antibody, and then the cells take up the blueprint and they're able to produce the antibody themselves. Unlike a vaccine, investigators say these antibodies could provide protection within hours, not weeks. We're not teaching the body how to fish. We're literally giving them the fish. With about a million Americans infected and more than 50,000 dead, DARPA hopes their project could provide temporary protection in time for an anticipated second wave for high-risk groups. Our healthcare workers, our frontline first responders, and then even potentially maybe the, the close personal contacts of those who are um, infected. But DARPA's primary mission is safeguarding U.S. troops who often deploy quickly to global outbreaks. So I don't want to use the word opportunity, but in some ways this is an opportunity for us to make sure we learn all of the potential lessons we can learn with this and apply those lessons learned to be more prepared the next time. There is going to be a next time. There is going to be a next time. On the timeline, the scientists we spoke to said they hope to have identified the best antibodies any day now and start clinical trials as early as this summer. That way, they hope to be prepared if there is another wave of coronavirus later this year, Gail. Well, Catherine, we're cheering them on. A temporary fix sounds pretty good under these circumstances. Thank you very much.